In our previous videos, we discussed about the male reproductive part of a flower, which is this part that has the anther lobes and the long filamentous stamen. And we also discussed that the male gamete, that is the pollens, are formed inside the anther lobes. And we also saw how these pollens are released outside in the environment. Now, what happens after they are released? After they are released, they fall on the female reproductive part of flower. Via different means, they fall onto the female reproductive part of flower, which is this one. The means can be weaned, it can be insects. Well, uh, that is again a different story. But once they fall on the female part, fertilization take place. Now, before we discuss in detail about fertilization and what all happens in fertilization, we need to first understand the female part. Okay, so in this video, we are going to talk in detail about the female reproductive part of a flower and we call that part the pistil. Well, when I was in my fifth or sixth grade and I saw the picture of this male and female part of flower in my textbook for the first time, I, f I thought that this female part quite resembled the water pitcher or the water jug. What do you think? Well, to help your imagination, how about I modify the pistol a little bit? What do you think now? Well, apart from the look, this jar and the pistol has some other similarities as well. We can derive some more similarities and let me tell you how. See, if you want to pour water into this jug, you will do it from the upper top, right? From the mouth of the jar. In the same way, when the pollen tube from the pollen enters this pistil, it will do it from the upper top portion. This swollen portion that you see, the pollen will enter its pollen tube from the upper top portion. Now, the water will rush through this long stylish neck that it has. Even here, the pollen will move down this long stylish neck that it has. And then, the water will be stored here in the jug. And in case of the pollen tube, it will do the fertilization somewhere here in the broad swollen area. Well, you need not worry about where this pollen tube has come from, how did it just develop from the pollen, because we will have a complete different video on it. But for now, just remember that the pollen enters from the top through its pollen tube and goes all the way down to this broad area. Okay, and again, if you are wondering, why is she calling this long slender area stylish? Well, this is because this area is, has got a special name. It is called style. And that is the reason I was calling it stylish. Okay. Now, the other parts of the pistol has also got specific names. This upper area. Well, let me remove the jar-like shape of pistol. There you go. Now, this upper area is called stigma. Stigma. Now the stigma secretes some sticky substances to which the pollen sticks. Now from stickiness, try remembering stigma. And this broad area down at the bottom, it consists of the eggs or it holds the egg or the female gamete. And this swollen area is called ovary. This is the ovary of the pistil. Well, this is all about how the pistil or the female reproductive part looks from the outside. Now, we also need to look what is on the inside of the pistil. So, let's zoom in to the inner side of the pistil. Now, if you have a closer look at this ovary area, you will see that there are small, small lobe-like structure attached to a stalk-like thing. These small, small lobes are nothing, but I like to call them the homes in which the female gamete will start growing. And this lobules or the lobes are called ovule. And it has also got a fancy name called megasporangium. Now, sporangium means the area or the place which will develop into a spore. 
in this case the female spore and it is called mega which means big because it is bigger than the male spores which are called microspores and they grow in microsporangium we have already discussed about it in our previous videos and since the ovule is the area where the female gamete develops, the pollen tube from the pollen has to reach all the way down to the ovule so that fertilization can take place. Now to understand the fertilization better and to understand where exactly the fusion between the pollen tube and the ovule is taking place, we need to understand the structure of the ovule in detail, right? So let us now zoom in to the ovary. And we will look into just one of the ovule. And an ovule is made up of a mass of cell which is called the nucellus. This word nucellus is derived from the word nucleus. And they have named it so because I assume as the nucleus is the center or the core part of an atom. In the same way the nucellar cells forms the core part of an ovule. And they are so important because one of the cell from these nucellar cells grow and develop into a female gamete or female spore. And as these are so important cells nature has given it a special protecting coat which is called the integuments. Here I have shown two layers of covering or integuments but some ovule has just one single layer. So these integuments are nothing but covers. They are covers that uh, coats the new cellar cells. But if you can observe closely, you will see that a small portion of the new cellar cells or the new cellar cell mass is left uncovered. Now, can you guess why? Okay, let me tell you. It is left uncovered so that the pollen tube from the pollen can come and reach the female gamut. As one of the cell will grow into a female gamete, right? So this area is left for the pollen tube to easily come and interact with the female gamete. And the small area that is left uncovered is called micropyle. Micro means small and pile comes from a Greek word which means gate. So this is like a small gate that allows the pollen tube to reach the new cellar cells or we can say to reach the female gamete. Now, the area in the new cellus, which is extreme opposite of the micropyle, is given a specific name called chalaza. So, chalaza is nothing but the bang opposite end of micropyle. Now, this new cellar cell mass with the covering cannot just float inside an ovary, right? It has to be attached to the walls of the ovary somewhere. So, this attachment is done by a stalk like thing which is named funicle. And this funicle and the ovary meets at a region called placenta. And also the area where the funicle meets the integuments, we call it the hela. Now if you are wondering, oh my god, there are so many new terms to remember. Then let me tell you that these are all words from the Greek and Latin origin. And that's why we, we find it very difficult. So should we remember these names? Well, uh, just for the sake of exams, we should. But otherwise, uh, it is okay if we don't remember all these terms. Alright, so this is all about uh, the structure of the ovule. Well, now, if you are thinking that, hey, this looks like an easy diagram, it is so simple. But this is not the one that we see in our textbooks. The one that we see in our textbooks looks something like this one. Well, this is exactly the same as this ovule, just placed upside down and therefore it is called an anatropus, anatropus ovule, which means upside down and this is the most common type of ovule found and therefore we get this image in most of the books. Okay now let us compare both the ovules for better understanding. So this inner circle that you see here is the female gamete and we have not made the female gamete here yet but it will be formed from one of these new cellar cells. So if we ignore this female gamete here this entire part will be the new cellus. Right? So let us give it the same color. This is the new cellus. And as you can see, the new cellus has two coverings here. It will also have 
two coverings. So these two things that you see are the integuments. And the portion which is left uncovered by the integument is called the micropyle. So this is the micropyle end. And the portion which is bang opposite to micropyle will be the chalaza end, right? So let us label them as well. And now as this ovule is placed upside down, this funicle and the placenta will be, will be somewhere on the top, right? So if we consider this to be the placenta, the portion that is attaching the placenta with the integuments will be called the funicle, right? So this is the funicle. Now can you guess where will be the helum? The helum is the area that is connecting the funicle and the integument. So it will be somewhere here. And this is it. These are all the different parts of a typical ovule. These are all the different parts that you need to know. And in our future video, we will talk about how the cells of the new cellars divide and form female gametes. But before we end the video here, I would like to leave you with an unlabeled diagram of an ovule. How about you pause the video and try and label different parts.